Alright, what's up guys? Motorbob here. Another beautiful day in London and today I'm test riding the Triumph Frixton R. So I've had like half hour already on this bike and I can already comprehensively say of all the bikes I've test ridden, this is the one man, this is amazing. Uh, let's start her up anyway and get back on the road. Clutch in and then you kill switch as you start switch. Oh man, listen to that. Sounds awesome. Alright, not sure why that ABS light is flashing, but we can just get on the way anyway. Oh, we're good, it's gone off. So, I'm not going to talk too much about specs for this bike because uh, you can always go and Google that. But in short, it's a parallel twin, 90 yard horsepower quite torquey sort of lower down it's not a bike that you like rev loads like a sports bike also obviously it's worth me saying at this stage that uh, I'm not really gonna get chance to ride this bike quickly because I picked it up from Metropolis motorcycles in Vauxhall in London and I'm in Hyde Park at the moment uh, there's loads of videos by MCN and visor down and people like that. So if you want to see someone wheeling it, getting their knee down, this isn't the place. But hopefully I'll uh, be able to give you a good impression of what it's like to ride, especially in the city. It's pretty great, to be honest. Oh, you have to go left here. I wanted to go right. Um, in terms of the sort of riding position, compared to other triumphs I've ridden in the sort of heritage range, obviously it's a little bit more tuck forward. You've got these cafe racer bars. They're on risers, these clip-ons. Uh, but still, you're a bit further forward than you might be on a Bonneville or a Street Twin or something like that, of course, because it's a sportier bike. I was reading it beforehand and <clears throat> the geometry is almost identical to the Speed Triple. So it's sporty and handling focused and obviously with the then ah, you get upgraded suspension and what else do you get upgraded brakes Brembo brakes but yeah so the riding position you know the foot pegs are fairly far back you're fairly far forward and you need to tuck your bum back a bit to get get down low so you could argue that it's not ideal for town riding you know I've tried things like the F800 GS from BMW or the Triumph Tiger and those kinds of things where you sat really upright even the street twin to be honest you're a bit more upright make it a little bit easier to sort of look ahead, see the traffic, and when you're filtering and stuff, you kind of want to be maneuvering, but I wouldn't say coming through um, Vauxhall and uh, up through um, Hyde Park Corner, there's a lot of traffic around there, and I wouldn't say it's particularly difficult to filter on this bike. It's got fairly decent full lock to get between the cars, and I'm about 5'10", 5'9", 5'10", on a good day and I can easily touch the floor on this bike, of course. It's not a high seat at all. So I'd say it's pretty maneuverable. I mean, as a town bike, it's definitely overkill. It's way too fast. Well, not too fast, but obviously it's a quick bike. So for just getting around London, you don't really 
need a bike of this nature, but if you're looking for something that you can stylishly commute around London on and then get out of town at the weekends and have a bit of fun when you open it up, then it might fit the bill, to be honest. Currently, I've got it in road mode. Uh, you've got three settings. One's for rain, so obviously I don't need that today. Road, which is somewhere in between, which is, you know, not quite giving you all the power at once, but still quick enough. And then there's also a sport mode as well, which is fast. I mean, road mode is just about perfect for this sort of thing, but I did try it in sport mode earlier. Um, and like even at sort of quarter throttle in first and second gear, <laughs> it feels like the front end's gonna lift. Like I wasn't particularly riding it hard, but it really takes off. In terms of electronics and gadgets, oh look at that gold Bentley, disgusting. Um, in terms of electronics on this bike, apart from the three riding modes, sort of gadgets and stuff, you've got your info button and there's two digital displays in the clocks there. Obviously that majority analog looking because it's a retro style of bike, but there's plenty of information in there, uh, the usual sort of odometer and fuel and how many miles you've got left in the tank what else miles per gallon average miles per gallon time trip one trip two so that's that um and then that's about it you know usual stuff headlights indicators hazards no heated grips or any comforts like that of course wouldn't really suit this style of bike And it's probably not something you want to ride in the winter and get all mucked up. I mean, I said right at the beginning of this video, of all the bikes I've test ridden, this one's probably one of my favourites, if not the favourite. And uh, I think we just have to talk about how it looks. I know that's not a deciding factor always for everybody about the bikes they buy, but this looks awesome. And I think, you know, you look at pictures of them on the... Uh, on the web or whatever and yeah you can tell it's a good looking bike but when you see them in the flesh they look great and then when you ride in it and you see your reflection in like a bus or something you think oh my god that looks great so I'm going to part lane again here just sweep them around and I'll put it into sport mode just to give you a wee demo because this is probably the only road in central London where you can actually get up to 40 look here Whoa. <laughs> probably just went a little bit over 40 there it's a lot of fun in sport mode uh, obviously I haven't got any twisties or whatever around here to test it out on but uh, I can envisage that being pretty amazing anyway i was saying it's a good looking bike i mean just look at it the details on the tank here with the band and the brush sort of aluminium cap and then the bars and that's only the stuff i can see from here it's just beautiful other factors that mean i really love it as well include the sound of the exhaust I mean, I test rode the uh, Street Twin, and one of the things I liked about that was that it had the 270 degree firing order that um, you also get on the Barber, I think, and the tr and I think the Bonneville America before that. And uh, it sounds a little bit more V20, but this is a 360 degree firing order, so it sounds more like a Triumph 
traditionally would. I mean, they both sound great, and this is with the stock pipes on. It's, you know, fairly loud. It's not as quiet as some of the other bikes that I've ridden. Something like an SV has the potential to be quite a nice sounding bike with it being a V-twin, but the sort of exhaust that they put on that is huge. So it's super muffled, but this is, yeah, nice sounding. I think it's probably the first thing that most people would replace anyway uh, on this bike. It's got a sort of um, tail cone on there, but there are pillion pegs and you can remove that. I'm not sure it'll be the most comfortable pillion ride. I don't think you'd be touring too up on it, but you know, if you just need to give someone a lift, they probably do the job if they hang on for dear life. Oh, that sound is so nice when it's purring at low revs. Oh. But ultimately, it's just super fun to ride. Just something that you kind of would probably want to hop on and ride every day. If you had to commute on something like this, it would make that a pleasure, not a chore. trying to be balanced and think of any negatives that you might have about this bike and I mean <laughs> I don't really know to be honest obviously it's not the cheapest bike but I don't think uh, you know budget friendly is most people's consideration with they're looking at a Thruxton I think it's cheaper than the R9T which is a competitor I suppose in the sort of retro modern bikes market and I'd say it's probably quite a nickable bike I mean sports bike are the worst for being nicked but I think for the first few years that you had this if you had it parked outside your flat in London you'd be quite paranoid about getting it stolen uh, but I wouldn't say that's a negative of this bike in particular that's just biking in London I'm afraid Maybe the price thing is a fair point. I mean, you know, if you're just wanting to get a retro bike for sort of pootling around town, something like a Ducati Scrambler or the Street Twin sort of fits the bill and they come in quite a bit cheaper. So maybe that's a better option. But as I said, if you want that combination of, of sort of a bit of performance riding, if you've got time at the weekends to get down into Surrey and Kent then maybe this is a better bet each to their own though and as I always say my interpretation of a bike is not going to be the same as yours and if you're really seriously thinking about buying a bike like this then obviously YouTube videos are only going to take you so far and dealers are pretty good about test rides so get out there and test it yourself actually this week it's trying for running this kind of demo week national demo week or triumph demo week or something i think it ends on saturday and i probably won't get this video up in time for this to be of any use to you guys but they are doing 500 quid off if you sort of subsequently buy a bike that you bought this sorry that you tested this week so well i'm just making my way back to the dealer now uh which is sad i wish i could take this bike and ride it for a week or something and really enjoy it and get to know it but i mean last consideration might be for some people whether to buy the thruxton or the thruxton r but from all the reviews i've read biking press seem to say that the difference in price for what you get you may as well just go for it and especially if you get it on finance or whatever you're going to notice that increment a lot less so seems like good advice to me anyway i know the question on everybody's mind right now as i'm bringing this back in is you know when is when is he going to get to the point and answer the question that we're all thinking which is how does this stack up is it better than my 2006 er6m which is parked over there somewhere hopefully uh i mean yeah it's all right yeah <laughs> 
they've both got their good points. I'm just going to stop here, stick my microphone in my back pocket as I uh, bring it round to the dealer to give you guys an idea of how it sounds. But anyway, any questions about this bike, leave them in the comments below. And if you're new, want to see more test rides and biking videos like this, then please click subscribe.